Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Particle Physics Brick by Brick where we're trying to explain as much about particle physics as we can using Lego. In this video we're going to be talking about spin statistics and explaining a little bit about the difference between certain particles. So we're going to start by talking about the fundamental particles of nature. There are two different families under which the fundamental particles of nature fall. Fermions with half integer spin, spin a half or spin 3 over 2. Or bosons which have a quantum spin of 0 or 1 or integer spin. Now the fermions are the particles that make up matter around us. So there are the leptons which is the electron and its heavier version the muon and tau plus the neutrinos. And then there are the quarks which build to make protons, neutrons and other complex particles. The bosons, however, are the force-carrying particles, so the colourful gluons, the photon, or the weak bosons, which carry the strong force, the electromagnetic force, and the weak force. There is also an additional boson, which is not a force carrier, that is part of this fundamental building block set, and that is the Higgs boson. Interaction with the Higgs is not like interaction with the other bosons. It does not convey a force, but instead imparts a mass to the particles it interacts with. Now let's pick an object which is commonly used to describe statistics. Let's choose a coin. And of course, a coin has heads and it has a tail side. The heads or the tails can be thought of as different states of the same coin. If we now had a different coin with a different head on it and a different tail on it, it's quite obvious that this is a very different coin. In a sense, we can represent them as different particles and the heads or the tails are different states. While the particles themselves can be easily identified as different, they can still have the same state, such as on this picture here, they are both in the tail state. Now, maximal Boltzmann statistics is the statistics which underlies classical particles, particles just like those coins which are easily identified. So we can have one coin with a certain head and a certain tail and another coin with another head and another tail. They are distinguishable. Those particles are easily distinguishable from one another, no matter what state they're in. And they're also allowed to occupy the same state, which means that two particles can both be tails and two particles can both be heads. That's perfectly allowed classically. That means that there are four possible outcomes if we flip these two coins. There is a heads heads, there is a tails tails, where both of the coins are in the same state, but then there are two further outcomes in which we can identify that one coin is in the tail state while the other is in the head state and vice versa. Because they are two different coins, we can tell the difference between the head and the tail state because the particles are different. So Maxwell Boltzmann statistics gives us a probability of one quarter that we find these two coins in each of these four different states. Now let's think about Bose-Einstein statistics, which explain the behavior of boson particles. Bosons, like other fundamental particles, are indistinguishable from one another. That means one boson will have exactly the same look when it looks in heads and tail state. These particles are indistinguishable, but like the Maxwell-Boltzmann, they are allowed to occupy the same state, which means that any two bosons can have exactly the same properties. But the fact is, because these particles are indistinguishable, it means the following. It means that those heads and tail states are indistinguishable from one another. We cannot tell which coin has shown heads and which coin has shown tails. And so those two outcomes get merged together into one possible state outcome. This means that for Bose-Einstein statistics and bosons, there is now only three possible outcomes. Each of those, again with equal probability, will have a third, a third, and a third. This means now that it's more likely to find particles that have the same state. So heads, heads, and tails, tails, for instance. We've gone from a probability of a quarter to get them both in the head state to a probability of a third, which is an increase. The third type of statistics I want to talk about is the Fermi-Dirac statistics. Fermi-Dirac statistics dictate the way in which fermions can behave. Now fermion particles, again, are like the other fundamental particles, they are themselves indistinguishable from one another. But unlike bosons and unlike particles that obey the Bose-Einstein statistics, they are not allowed to occupy the same state. This means that the previous states of heads heads and tails tails are no longer allowed, leaving only one state allowed, and that is the combination of the possible heads and tails. This means that with a fermion coin, 
we would end up with 100% probability of getting a tails heads state. Let's extend this model even further and let's start talking about dice. So if we had two different particles or two distinguishable dye, one colored red and one colored white, then we could see quite clearly that each of them are in different states and they are indeed different particles. The states now don't relate to heads or tails, they relate to each of the numbers on the faces of the die. Maxwell Boltzmann statistics again say that we can distinguish between the two particles. That means that we can have one red die and one white die and they are both allowed in Maxwell Boltzmann statistics to occupy the same state. This means that we get the following outcomes. At the bottom is the total on the face of the die. These are the different states that we can measure. To get a total sum of two, we only have one possible way of achieving this, if we have a one and a one. If we want to get three as our state, there are two possible ways of doing this, a one and a two, or a two and a one, distinguishable because they are on different colored die. For a four, there are three possible ways. For a five, there are four possible ways. There are five possible ways of getting a total for six, and there are six possible ways of getting a total for seven. That's the most ways in which we can get one of these final states. After that, it decreases. There are five ways of getting an eight, four ways of getting a nine, three ways of getting a 10, two ways of getting 11, and again, only one way of getting 12. This means that in total, there are 11 possible states in which these two particles can be from two through to 12. And there are 36 possible ways of these two dice being in one of those 11 different states. And now we can work out the probability of each of those states occurring because we just look at the number of ways in which we can achieve it and divide through by the total number of possible ways. So the probability of getting a two or a 12 is one in 36 a three or 11, one in 18, and so on. Now let's look at boson dice that obey Bose-Einstein statistics. Here the two dice are indistinguishable, but they are allowed to occupy the same state, which means both may have the same number face up. This leads to the following. There is one way of getting two as before, but because the die are indistinguishable, our two ways of getting an outcome of three are actually one and the same way. And so we only get one possible way of getting the outcome of three. Again, we lose one of the possible ways of getting an outcome of four because the three and the one are indistinguishable in terms of which die is showing what. And so we get two ways of getting four. This continues. We only find we have two ways of getting an outcome of five, three ways of getting an outcome of six, three ways of getting an outcome of seven, three possible ways of getting eight, two possible ways of getting nine, two ways of getting 10, one way of getting 11, and one way of getting 12. You can quite clearly see this is a very different statistic. And the outcome and the distribution of these particles is going to be very different to the classical Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. If we total these together, we see that we have 21 possible ways in which these two die can form a state. And again, we can assign a probability to each one of these 11 states from two through to 12 by taking the number of ways that we can achieve that state and dividing through by the total. So there's a one in 21 chance of getting a two, a three, 11 or 12. There is a two in 21 chance of getting a four or five and a nine or a 10. And there is a three in 21 chance of getting a six, a seven or an eight. Now let's look at Fermi Dirac statistics and we roll some fermion dice. If we roll some fermion dice, again, these two dice will be indistinguishable. But remember, fermions are not allowed to occupy the same state. This means that the two dice are not allowed to land with the same number face up. This leads to, again, a very different distribution. This is the distribution we got from our bosons, which are indistinguishable, but the two dice were allowed to be in the same state. But with fermions, this isn't the case, which means we lose all of those states in which the two dice have the same number face up. Now looking at it, we see that the probability of actually being in state two is zero. So for fermion dice, it's impossible for them to be in the state two or 12 because the probability is zero. And the probability also changes for the other states as well. We see then if we add them up, 
we have a total of 15 possible outcomes for two fermionic dice. And again, we can use this to sign a probability to each of the different states. So the probability of getting a 3, a 4, or a 10 or an 11 is 1 in 15. The probability of getting a 5, a 6, an 8 or a 9 is 1 in 15, while again, still most probable is the 7 with a 1 in 5 chance. You can see that this distribution is yet again very different to the distribution of boson states. These distributions can be used when looking at the behavior of particles to define whether they are a fermion or a boson. Thanks for listening. If you would like to know more, subscribe to my YouTube channel or follow me on social media for more information. You could also buy the book. Particle Physics Brick by Brick is available through online retailers and many local bookstores. Other languages are also available. If you follow this bit.ly link, you can also get access to lots of educational resources and information on where you can get your hands on LEGO to play along. LEGO is a registered trademark of the LEGO Group, which does not sponsor, authorise or endorse these videos in any way.